Agent Romanov. You miss me? Oh yeah, Charles. We got ourselves an X-Men fan. Captain. Yeah, Captain. Big fan. Spider-Man. Hey everyone. Hey everybody. Welcome back to Film Artsy. And if you're not excited, get excited because the new Loki series is going to be kicking off real soon in preparation for this new Loki series, which I am super excited for. We at Film Arts are super excited for. I thought today we'd take a look at our favorite God of Mischief. Yes, Mr. Slick Greaseback Hair, Tom Hiddleston, Heartthrob, Loki. We're going to talk about where he's been, all the different story points along his journey, and actually talk about the two different types of Lokis that exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and also some predictions about what might happen in the new Loki series. So let's get started. When we first meet Loki, it's in the first Thor movie all the way back in 2011. He's this sly, manipulative prince, son of Odin, and he's actually loyal to the realm of Asgard and seems like he has a pretty good relationship with Thor, his brother, and it seems actually like a pretty good person. He doesn't seem fairly evil at the first point that we meet him. But during this movie, he meets with the Frost Giants and discovers the truth that had been hidden from him, that he himself is actually a Frost Giant, and he was abandoned as a young baby, picked up by Odin, and Odin essentially had taken him in with the hope that this would be a way to bridge peace between Hottenheim or Hottenheim, the ice place, and Asgard. And we find out during this time that this is something that really hit Loki pretty hard because he's already had feelings about Odin not really loving him as a favorite son. Clearly Thor seemed to be his favorite and it even more hurt him deeply that he found out he's adopted and almost feels like he's been used as a pawn or simply one of Odin's new it's a really actually I think a really powerful moment where he feels like he's just one of the other many things that Odin has taken because we know Odin has this big chamber of stuff and this sets Loki down the path of his evil I mean he's the god of mischief but this really sets him down the path that we see him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as this evil anti-hero really a villain. At the end of Thor 1, Loki lets himself fall from the broken Bifrost bridge into a warm home of space rather than make amends for what he has done or accept any punishment that might be forthcoming. Once again, this is a really interesting story. Loki's an interesting character, and that's what I'm really excited about the series is we're going to flesh that out. But all of that, turning, getting the Frost Giants in uproar, having all this stuff happen with the kingship and instead of like making that right he's so hurt and he's so like broken he lets himself go into the wormhole to wherever that takes him and we don't see loki again until the first avengers movie and this is our next point in the timeline we assumed that maybe loki had died or he wasn't gonna be seen again but that was not the case loki is very much alive and on the other side of that wormhole was the sanctuary or where thanos reigned this is where he meets the Chitauri, it becomes Thanos' personal servant, and this is when he receives the powerful scepter in order to go and get the Tesseract back from Earth. Obviously, we learn later that the scepter and the Tesseract both contain Infinity Stones. At the next point in the storyline, we got Loki coming back to Earth, and he causes quite a, I mean, he is a pretty formidable foe for the first gathering of the Avengers, and in getting the Tesseract, he takes over a bunch of humans, have them build this big portal machine with all the wires and stuff, and blasts a big wormhole up in the air, and Chitauri soldiers and aliens all just pour out of that black hole. And this is actually Loki's effort to be a king, because he's not getting the kingship of Asgard. He thinks that if he helps Thanos get these two, this Tesseract and the Scepter, that he'll be able to be the ruler of Earth. We don't know if this is just a way, like, because... Thor's girlfriends from Earth. We're not sure why he wants Earth. Maybe it's convenient for the storyline, but that's where he joins Thanos and does this very thing, and it doesn't go well. The Avengers end up beating him and getting the Tesseract and the Scepter. So he Loki feels pretty big on that part and has to be sent to Asgard prison. So now we've got two Loki time points, and he goes from Decent dude to bad to even worse like team up with Thanos bad and now we're in Thor Dark World and we start seeing Loki develop as a person. Now Loki's rough around the edges. He's never a clear cut good guy and even this movie that he does help Thor in the Dark World movie. He still has some very Loki moments and we... <laughs> Loki moments. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that was bad. 
And the next point in the storyline, after the Avengers, we find Loki withering away in his guardian dungeon. Probably sentenced to the forever because he jacked up Odin into the deep sleep, pretend you know, took the kingship wrongly, sent the destroyer on Asgardians, then he teamed up with the mad titan Thanos, tried to take over a world by invading it with aliens, and so yeah, that's a pretty bad list. And I don't know how many life sentences that would equal for a god, I don't even know how long it takes for a god to die, but. Uh, it seemed like he'd be in prison for a long time. This is where we find him. But he still is being brought back in the MCU, which is just interesting because it, you don't see this really with any other villain. He's in the dungeons until his mother, Frigga, dies. And there's some really cool interaction where we find out that Loki is so much more than just a guy who wants to do bad things. He loves his mother, even though his mother's his adopted mother. And the finding out that she has died and been killed by a dark elf. There's actually a really interesting scene where he looks fine, but then when his Loki magic is pulled back, you find him just absolutely, like, broken. And it's really Tom Hiddleston acting super well, and also just realizing that Loki has so much more depth than I want to be a king, which is ultimately all he's wanted, he thinks, but really he's trying to find who, who he is and his place in this world since it's, you know, he was thrown out as a young baby and he's never had really a place in Asgard and he forfeited whatever place that was in the first movie. So he teams up with Thor and in this sequence of the Dark World as he carries the weight of that movie because the movie wasn't very good, he dies. and. I know we know what happened post. I don't know if there was an end credit scene, so maybe there was, and it kind of revealed that he was not dead. But he dies, and it seems pretty convincing and sacrificial. So much so that Thor's telling him, like, we're going to tell the story of what you did here today. And he said, you know, he says, I didn't do it for them. I basically said, way that I did it for you, Thor. And it's a really touching moment. Part of me kind of wa wanted it to be final, not because I don't want to see Tom Hiddleston again, but it really was moving. And it would have been stinky to maybe waste it on that movie, but it was a pretty incredible, like, wow, like, there goes Loki. But, no, no, Loki is not gone. He is back again, and we still have Prime Loki, and that brings us back to Thor Ragnarok. Before we continue our video, I just want to let you guys know that we have a really cool Instagram that updates on a regular basis. So if you like all things Marvel, this is the Instagram for you. So go follow that LMRT Instagram right now. You won't regret it. I promise you. Seriously, open Instagram right now and click that follow button. Now back to the video. That's right. Thor eventually discovers Loki's deception and hops on back to Asgard, finds him posing as Odin, apparently he has displaced Odin, is posing at it, and Thor finds him like enjoying a play that's recreating the scene between Loki and Thor in the Dark World, and they go on an adventure to realize that after Odin passes, their super bad sister comes at, out of hell, I guess, or whatever prison she is, and she is way stronger than they are, and Thor and Loki once again have to team up to beat Hella. This is furthering Thor and Loki's relationship and actually there's some really powerful lines that I like in here where Thor reveals that Loki means the world to him and then he just explains but the way he's chosen to live and the divergent past they have that it was just ne it's never going to come together it seems like. They realize that at, to save Asgard they actually have to destroy Asgard, they have to bring Ragnarok so they actually summon the fire demon Surtur and he begins to all cleanse him process and this ultimate defeats Hela and it's really an awkward moment because they're like Asgard's not a place it's a people and we're like yeah yeah and then like five seconds later they get all killed by Thanos so, not all of them but a lot of them and this is where prime Loki dies the next point on Loki's tragic you know interesting storyline is he kind of turns good and helps Thor save Asgard and that seems maybe like the redemption arc, but he dies. So we lose Loki, and it's really hard. And it, I do kind of hate that it gets tacked on to the beginning of Infinity War. I get that it kind of makes the stakes feel real because we do see Loki go down. But at the same time, felt like we needed more Loki, and so did Marvel. So this is where we're going to get second Loki, and let's talk about that here. So maybe you've been confused, but there's actually two Lokis that exist, and it's all due to this new Loki series. So if you've been tracking with me, the bookend to the first Loki is we meet him in Thor 1, and he ends in Infinity War. Then we got second Loki, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, is that during Endgame, when they try to get the Tesseract in New York, 
and the test rack gets kind of tossed around between Iron Man having his shock and the tart and Ant-Man and the Hulk banging the door, the other Loki grabs the test rack and disappears. And that's immediately when we have the branching timeline. And that's where I think the Loki series is gonna start off. They made that pretty clear in the trailers that they've been showing. So we've got a very different Loki at that point. So part of me is excited, part of me is a little discouraged. So what's interesting about that Loki is he is still full of wrath and rage at that time. He feels, you know, betrayed by Odin and his lies and deceitfulness and that Thor doesn't have his best interest. And then he has just failed to succeed his efforts of getting the stuff to Thanos and taking over the earth. So he's like where we found him in that prison cell in Dark World. But really, by all accounts, this is kind of like the total uh, jerk, awful Loki. Like this is the baddest of the Loki that Loki has been. And that reflective moment that he gets in Asgardian prison with his mother dying, he doesn't get here. The TVA will recruit the God of Mischief to help clean up the temporal mess that he's created and get grabbing the Tesseract and skedaddling and getting out of there. So it will be pretty interesting because now the Ancient Ones like what she said is right, and I actually have a different video that talks about how Captain America actually failed due to the reality that this separate timeline does exist because the tester got got, and that, did, that didn't ever get fixed. And what that means moving forward for Loki, I don't know if he ever makes it back into the main timeline. I know they're trying to keep the series as not a necessity, but we love our Loki, and there's some rumors that this might not be the only season, so I look forward to see what they're doing. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you're excited about the Loki series, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share this with your friends. We produce these videos like on the daily, so we've always got stuff coming for you guys. And if you've got anything that you'd like to see, let us know in the comments. And as always, until next time guys, thanks for watching.